The following is a paid commercial program paid for by American Real Estate Investments, LLC, and does not reflect the opinions or advice of KRLD or Intercom Media Corporation. Are you wanting to invest in real estate? Get your cowboy hat on and let's talk passive income investing in the real estate market in North Texas. Here's your experts, John Larson and Johnny Collins, and your host, Amanda Guerra. A very good morning to you, and welcome to the very first Real Estate Cowboys radio show. I'm your host, Amanda Guerra, with your head honcho cowboy, John Larson. John is the owner of American Real Estate Investments, an active investor himself, and the founder of Real Estate Cowboys. We will be joined this show and every show by the president of Community and National Title, one of John's very good friends, Johnny Collins. Collins. Our goal of this show is to teach you everything you need to know about real estate investing and what is your return on life. So guys, I'm super excited to start this show with you. A very good morning to both of you. Good morning to you. <laughs> good morning, Amanda. Thank you. So tell us, uh, John, for, for folks listening, give us a little bit about your background and why you wanted to do this show and your goal of it. And I've been in real estate since I was honestly a teenager. Uh, my family has always been involved in real estate, flipping houses, things like that. We're from the uh, Detroit area. I'm from Michigan, actually. I moved to Texas in, in the Dallas area in 2014. But, uh, you know, in my, my teenage years, the summers after school got out, I'd be on job sites, helping out, learning how to rehab homes, things of that nature. Went away to college, uh, got a business degree, came back, got my real estate license right away, started off as, uh, you know, just a, a regular real estate agent, right, trying to help um, retail buyers. Uh, I was working at a luxury luxury bro- brokerage in um, in Michigan. Did that for a little bit and found out, you know, that investments was definitely the path that I wanted to go on just because, you know, and investors don't necessarily buy on emotion. They buy on the numbers. And so I had the capabilities of doing a lot more deals. Through that, I met the uh, team at American Real Estate Investments. Uh, at that time, they were headquartered in Kansas City, Missouri. I moved my life from Michigan to Kansas City, worked there for a little bit with them, quickly became partner. And then we moved the company down to Dallas in 2014 just because I truly believe that the Texas real estate market is where it's at. Um, it's, It's the number one real estate market in America, in my opinion. It has the most investment opportunities and the greatest investment opportunities. I truly believe that. And so that's why I decided to start the Real Estate Cowboys and uh, get on KRLD and start this show so I can educate everybody here in the Dallas area, Texas, and abroad about all the great opportunities that we have here. And I know Johnny sitting right next to you on this Sunday morning is, is vital uh, to you. Tell us, Johnny, introduce yourself to, to everybody. Awesome. Well, my name is Johnny Collins. I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. I am the son of Helen Collins, who was a longtime real estate broker, so much so that she had her first uh, seat with Merrill Lynch Real Estate. You guys don't even remember that. You don't even remember wow. when Merrill Lynch had a, <laughs> had a real estate brokerage. So that'll tell you how long I've been riding the back of a hatchback or, you know, pulling out yard signs and blah, blah, blah. I actually grew up um, really under her desk um, at the height of her business. Uh, all the way to 1997 when my father was diagnosed with cancer and she retired. And she was able to do that based on what she had accumulated, right, uh, during her time as a real estate broker. So um, that's been an awesome, uh, giving me awesome perspective and just insight into this industry. And what's really, really awesome about real estate is I was blessed to receive a scholarship uh, to TCU where I ran track. And, of course, we won. A whole lot. You've got to give a shout out to TCU. Always. He's got his TCU hat yeah, on this yeah, morning. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna show love to TCU always. <laughs> um, but when I was a sophomore in college, I always tell people I bought my first house. But in reality, I bought my first two houses. I bought my first rental property for four thousand dollars on Judge Street on the south side of Fort Worth. And what's funny about it is I ended up flipping it for twelve thousand dollars. Wow. Well, that's profit, right? Oh, that's yeah. a profit. And, yep. thinking, and in college. You know, yeah, I was in college. And um, so so they, that, that's given me great great perspective. We're now in the title business. I'm the president of Community National Title, myself and Philip Postel, who my other partner in business, you know, he's he's an awesome guy. We've been able to do some pretty some pretty good things, if I can say that, along with our wonderful team at Community National Title. So we're excited to be here. When you called, I said, Yeah, I'm in. Let's do it. So, so we're talking a lot on this show about real estate investing, passive real estate investing. For people who are curious about it, those who don't know fully about it, explain what that is. So in my business uh, at American Real Estate Investments, we buy, renovate, 
uh, place tenants in these properties and then manage these properties for our investors so they can get a passive experience, right? But I'm, me and my team, we're in the trenches every day. And I could sit here and tell you for days about how many problems we run into and things that come up that are unexpected when you're doing this stuff yourself, when you're actually going out, dealing with the real estate agents, dealing with the wholesalers uh, to find these deals. And then you're dealing with your contractors who some of them aren't very trustworthy and will take advantage of you. And, uh, you know, then just the day to day management of the asset, dealing with the tenants and things like that, it can be very, very problematic and it really turns into a job. So at my company, what we do is we do all that stuff for our investors so they don't have to do the heavy lifting. They just sit back, relax, collect their, their rental checks each month. And that's just one aspect of passive investment. Well, and I think you and I talked about for people when they first thinking about getting into real estate, they're watching all these shows on TV. I'm going to flip houses. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. And you just said it. That's a messy job. Yeah. You know, you watch these shows and it looks like, you know, you can make $70,000, $100,000 yeah. in, in a one hour show. Right. Yeah. It really doesn't work that way. Uh, it's an everyday job. you got to be constantly watching these these properties as they're going through the renovation process. And so, you know, the, the whole reason that we decided to get on the air and, and talk and, and start the Real Estate Cowboys is one, we love Texas. Um, I'm, I'm from Michigan, but I, I believe I'm a Texan now. I love Texas. I ain't going anywhere. And, and I believe that there's a wealth of, of opportunity in this state of Texas, here in DFW, Houston, all the major cities of Texas. But, um, you know, the, the opportunities that these investors have to passively invest in real estate that we can show them and teach them, it's, it's just really great. So uh, this is just the first show. Um, you know, we're going to be talking about a lot of different passive income options in real estate. Looking forward to it. And I, and I love it too, John. You know, when, you, when you're watching these reality TV shows on, on flipping, you know, about flipping and fixing, you know, they, they, they're not going to make any money if they show you, you know, just a whole bunch of bad situations. But you all have to know there are a lot of bad situations out in the world right now. We, 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 we deal with them, you know, on a weekly occasion where I'll see somebody that's paying somebody to be coached by some guy that has never really done anything in his life in the flipping movement. He's got on social media and started something. Now, all of a sudden, he's an expert. Well, that's not the case. And what happens is you have a lot of people who are jumping into those types of platforms. Everybody involved in the transaction looks dumb because the expectations were not set properly on the front end. So I love what you all are doing because the expectations are being set, but more importantly, they're being met. And there's something to say to that. Absolutely. Well, John and Johnny, thank you so much. Uh, We're going to come back. And like you heard John say, even though he came from Michigan, we're not going to hold it against him. He is a Texan now. (laughs) And and why the Texas real estate market is so hot, why you need to be investing here. This is the Real Estate Cowboys radio show. Did you know there are six different ways real estate pays investors? Are you interested in getting started with real estate investing but just don't know how? Investing in real estate can be challenging, especially if you don't have the time, experience, or resources to do so. At American Real Estate Investments, they do all the hard work for you. They're a DFW-based company that buys homes in great neighborhoods, professionally renovates them, and places business professional tenants in your property. With their program, you can start earning headache-free passive income and equity growth from appreciating values in the fast-growing DFW market. There is no better place in America to invest in real estate today. To learn more about how their investors are earning up to 100% returns or greater with their program, give them a call at 888-323-AREI or visit their website at areiusa.com. That's 888-323-AREI or areiusa.com. Welcome back to the Real Estate Cowboys Radio Show. I'm Amanda Guerra, along with John Larson and Johnny Collins. This show is all about real estate investing, specifically, John and Johnny, about passive real estate investing. Talk to us about that. Give us some more examples of what that is for folks listening. Yeah, so we we touched on rental properties, uh, single family rentals, uh, briefly. And also, there's the private money lending option, syndications. Uh, a lot of investors are interested in that. I would say that that's probably the most passive model because it's basically the investor becomes the bank, sure. uh, gives guys like us uh, the, the, the money to go and get these great investment opportunities here in Texas. Absolutely. You know, single family land developments, commercial land developments, all this stuff is in huge, huge demand right now here in the Texas market, DFW, Houston, all the major cities. Uh, and then also vacation rentals. That's something that people don't necessarily think about. It's still a rental property. Um, it's still in demand, right, in yep. some of these nice 
uh, areas across the world, the Caribbean, just south of us. Um, and, and it gives the investor the opportunity to also use that vacation rental sometimes. And when they're not using it, we rent it out for them, and they collect you know, cash flow off the rental income. Now, that's passive income. Absolutely. Right. And that's, that's that what is your return on life that we always like to talk about as well. Well, John, let's talk about that a little bit. I, I love Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant. That top left-hand quadrant, that's the, you know, that's the employee quadrant. Then you start getting to the bottom left-hand uh, corner, which is the self-employed. That's where most investors usually stay. Because they want to manage the whole shebang. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is when you walk in and you have no experience, when you mess up, you pay for it. That's right. I always say when you're first starting off, if you're not in a position where you're doing the due diligence and you've got somebody with some real wisdom behind you to really support you, right, you're going to pay that first house. You're just going to pay for it. Just, but when you when you focused on truly moving to a passive place, that top right-hand corner of the cash flow quadrant, which is called the business owner perspective, that's when you have other people, mm -hmm. right, to come in and do the work. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're using the concept of leverage. Why wouldn't I want to use and leverage the knowledge that John Larson has to go out and make my money work? John, why wouldn't I want to do that? I don't know why you wouldn't want to do it. Honestly, I mean, I've I've made all the mistakes that a lot of con that a lot of new investors would maybe make if they tried to do this on their own. Right. Sure. And I've learned th from those mistakes to yeah. where now I have a great model where an investor can step into my office and basically just sign the contract. And I'm going to deliver a totally turnkey product to them with an investor in place, and I'm going to do the management. They're John, leveraging. You know what I love about what you're saying? Yep. I've heard you say that all over the world. <laughs> That's true. From Texas to Africa, I've heard you say it all over the world. The same rule just keeps applying. You guys have talked about kind of the mistakes that people can run into, or, John, that you've, you've come across yourself. What are some of those troubles if people try to do this on their own without some help that they can run into? Well, I mean, it all takes its knowledge and experience in this yeah. game, really. Um, you and know, relationship. And relationships, very much so. So, you know, the guy on Douglas Street, even though he lives here, it doesn't mean that he can find a good deal in this market. No. You know, this is a very, very hot market right now, and inventory is at an all-time low. It's the greatest rental market in the history of mankind. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. And so, you know, even somebody that wants to go do this themselves, how are they going to find these deals? How do they know that they're getting a really good deal? How do they know that the repair estimate that this agent or whole, a wholesaler gave them is actually, you know, accurate? And if you don't have a construction background, you're going to walk this property. You have no idea what things cost. And, John, I was getting ready to say— it's, it's not like it's, it's feasible just to walk into, you know, Home Depot and buy everything, you know, on the retail side and think that's going to work out. What I love about some of the things that you all have done is you've gone in and you've cut deals and you've gotten, you know, this, this, these materials at way under market cost just to pad in even more margin for the client. That's absolutely true. I mean, you know, you don't go just a retail buyer can walk into Home, Tep Home Depot and get, you know, contractor discounts. Sure. Or, you know, you're not buying things in bulk and getting that, that cost down because margins here in this market today, we're in a seller's market, plain and simple. Yeah. And so there's really no deals on properties. Yeah. Uh, and we're also at, there's, there's scarcity when it comes to properties. So, you know, you're really going to have to make your margins in the rehab cost. Yeah. And that's material cost well, you're making, and labor. You're making your margin in knowledge. And, and in knowledge, of, yeah. of course. Yeah, absolutely. But so that's that's one thing. Um, you know, another thing would be I'm, I'm one turnkey provider, right? And I focus in Dallas and some other markets, you know, around the country, but uh, mainly here in Texas and DFW in Houston. And, you know, I do what I call a, a high B to an A class property. Sure. And I do that. You mean you don't do C class? I mean, <laughs> no, no, I really avoid those those type of properties because those are a lot more risky, in my opinion. And when your risk increases, the passiveness of the investment really decreases. Talk about and explain why. to people what uh, what those properties are. Yeah, so an, an A and B property is going to be more so priced. The price is going to be in line with whatever the median value is in that market. Absolutely. So right now we're looking at DFW. The median value is about 280 yeah. today. So you really need to be buying in that 200 kind of price point to get that A class property or that high B property because that's really going to attract that middle class type tenant, a business professional tenant, someone with a family, someone that's going to stay long term, take better care of the asset, take pride in the in, Ex yeah. exactly, and and pay their bills, sure. right? You know this becomes passive when you're getting your rent checks consistently every month and you're avoiding things like evictions and all that other stuff. And I found that if you deviate too far below whatever the median value is in any market, it doesn't matter where it's at. Yeah. You're just going to run into more risk, and that takes the whole passive investment model out of owning rental properties. Sure, because the reason is because now your air conditioners have been stolen, and somebody's <laughs> got to get up and go replace them. So, yeah, there's nothing passive about replacing stolen air conditioners. You know, at 
Two uh, o'clock in the daytime when people have children and they're all sweating to death. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and not only that, but, you know, you get into some of these riskier neighborhoods, these lower priced neighborhoods, you know, crime and theft and break ins and things like that are a lot more, you know, they're more common. They're more prevalent. I mean, yeah. that's the reality of it. The copper, is, the copper will be stripped. It's just mm-hmm. a matter of time. Don't put too nice of a, of a, of a, um, a light fixture on the outside. It will be taken, specifically if no one is there, you know, to monitor. It's funny because from a title perspective, we, we have a lot of builder clients and, you know, I have, I have a handful of really great buddies that are in the custom home building uh, um, industry. And look, in some of the nicest areas in the Metroplex, if you don't have an eyeball on it, they're still mm-hmm. in there, too. So yep. you have to go in with the with the proper uh, game plan and something that's going to mitigate risk and save you money versus having to pad in, you know, the slush fund for all of the, you know, the bad stuff. Yeah, exactly. Now, Johnny, you're from Texas. You got your hat on. We mentioned your TCU hat. I am. John, you got here, as they say in Texas, as fast as you can. So why the Texas market? Why even specifically DFW for real estate? Have you been to Michigan? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think I have been. It just seems very cold. I heard you can golf there or something. Yeah, I mean, really, the only thing Michigan's got going for it right now is their uh, their basketball team is pretty good, the Michigan Wolverines. So, uh, but other than that, I mean, you're not seeing the the same type of uh, population growth, economic growth that you're seeing in Texas. And so, another one of my risks would be a risky market. Uh, me as an investor, I'm not really looking into the Detroit area. I'm not really looking into the Midwest area for real estate investments and development opportunities because I just find that those areas are a little bit more volatile. Um, they're just they're they're more risky. Um, and when it comes to you know when we go through tough economic times, sure. Like you look at the last recession, it really really hurt the Midwest. It really hurt Detroit specifically. Uh, people were moving out of Michigan and did the Detroit area in droves. So you know, but where it's, were they? It's funny, John. Let me just chime in on that. It's funny because I just had this conversation at lunch, and uh, one thing that we were talking about is how, you know, for as bad as it was in the DFW and Texas markets, it was nowhere close to the other markets. What people don't really understand in terms of the numbers of what happened in Texas, a lot of ours was Mm fraud-based. We had a lot of—there was more fraud committed during that time in Texas than most states. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. In other states— there was no fraud involved, and it still went to hell in the handbasket, yeah, yeah. right? So, so Texas, Texas has the ability to absorb because of our our appreciation rates. That and and the diverse economy. Sure. You know, you look at uh, the Midwest. You look at Detroit specifically. I'm just using Detroit as an example because I'm from there, but it's very very reliant on the the big three. Yeah. You know, and when the automotive industry wasn't doing very well, it really affected Detroit. But then you look at you know Texas as a whole. I mean, we have oil here, and we have pretty much the most diverse economy, Texas and California and New York City, yeah. have the most diverse economies in, in the nation. So, you know, let's say we do go through some tough economic times and it does affect some uh, sort of business, right? We have the most corporate headquarters right here in Dallas-Fort Worth. Yeah. And you know? more and more are coming. Exactly. So, you know, all the Fortune 500s that are here, and I believe Texas is the second or third most uh, in the country in terms of Fortune 500 headquarters, I think it's just behind New York. Yeah. So, you know, you see how diverse the economy is with me as an investor and someone that's looking for passive investment. Uh, how do you go wrong with this market? You know, just kind of from a grassroots level, just the, the simple economics of Texas is phenomenal because we still have so much room for growth. There are a bunch of companies that are coming in. They're not having to pay the corporate taxes you right. know, at, at the rates in which they're getting them at other states. Your biggest issue is just ad valorem taxes. And you know what? When you have children in school... I'm not worried about that. All it does is make my children have a greater school experience. So hopefully they can be as smart as you one day, John. I hope so, too. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we're going to teach you how to be successful here in Texas in the real estate market. Again, you are listening to the Real Estate Cowboys radio show. And coming up, uh, John, we're going to talk to a good friend of yours, Graham Parham, with Highlands Residential Mortgage. One reason people need to stick around and listen to Graham. All right, Graham. Well, yeah, Graham is uh, he's he's a special friend of mine. And He's a definitely a key role in my business. Uh, he's a very investor-friendly lender that gets those loans done uh, quickly and efficiently. So We're going to talk to Graham coming up. This is the Real Estate Cowboys radio show. In the meantime, check us out at realestatecowboysdfw.com. Looking to finance your first investment property? Let Graham Parham at Highlands Residential Mortgage guide you through the process and make your first transaction smooth and painless. As a seasoned investor, Graham owns several investment properties himself, and he can share with you the best way, the best strategy. 
Highlands Residential Mortgage has one of the best in-house loan processes to deliver your loan on time and without any surprises. As one of Inc.'s 5,000 fastest growing privately held companies in America, our teammates care about you and your financial future. Let Graham and the Parham team close your loan on time every time. Call Graham's toll-free direct number today at 855-326-6802 for your free mortgage consultation or visit us online at texasinvestorloans.com. Highlands is an equal opportunity lender, NMLS 195724, located 1201 North Central Expressway, Dallas, Texas 75234. Highlands Residential Mortgage, NMLS 134871 is not a financial advisor. The following program has been paid for by American Real Estate Investments, LLC. All opinions expressed on this program are solely the opinions of American Real Estate Investments, LLC, and do not reflect the opinions of KRLD or Intercom Media Corporation. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the program as a specific inducement to follow a particular strategy regarding real estate financing or investment. And before acting on information on the program, you should seek advice from your own financial, tax, mortgage, or real estate advisor. Welcome back to the Real Estate Cowboys radio show. I'm Amanda Guerra along with John Larson and Johnny Collins. We've been talking to you this Sunday morning about investing in Texas real estate, how to be successful here, and why it is such a hot market. But joining us now, we are so excited to have Graham Parham. He is with Highlands Residential Mortgage, also a very successful investor himself. And John, you're a huge fan of Graham's. Oh, yeah, I love Graham. Graham's been a mortgage loan officer for over 18 years with 25 years in sales and marketing. Uh, he's specializes in loans here in North Texas. Um, Graham is ranked in the actual, this year you were 1% in loan originations for 2017 in the whole U.S., which is awesome. And uh, Graham is also a passive real estate investor himself. He owns several rental properties in DFW and other areas in the U.S. He is also well-versed in the 1031 exchange rules and how to maximize investor capital. So Graham, thanks for being on today. Thank you, John. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. So Graham, one, tell me a little bit about Highlands Mortgage and how they can help our listeners. Highlands Mortgage is just located right up the street here. We're uh, privately held. Uh, the management of our company has been in the industry for 20, 30 years plus. Very strong group. We're well-funded, and uh, one of our uh, specialties is that we do deliver our loans directly to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, predominantly to Fannie Mae because they're a lot easier to work with. But we primarily deal in those arenas for the investor. Highlands Mortgage really is they're very user-friendly when it comes to investor lending. A lot of lenders out there uh, view investor loans is a hot potato right out of the chute, uh, simply because of all the, the, the scandalous things that went on prior to the 2008 mortgage meltdown. A lot of the mortgage fraud was done primarily in the uh, non-owner-occupied category, which is investor. And so a lot of the loaners out there that are just very gun-shy of doing investor loans, where we kind of welcome them all the, all, to, all the time. And uh, it, it seems to work out very well with our investors that when we deliver these loans out into the secondary market, I mean, they're clean loans, because, you know, predominantly the, the investors that we work with, as far as, you know, John and you and I, I mean, they're great credit scores, lots of money in the bank. They just want to put their money in a quality product, which is what you offer. But, uh, you know, user-friendly is the key here is we have a machine set up uh, at our office. I have a complete team set up, ready to go. I have uh, two processors, two underwriters, a couple of assistants and closers, but we all have our lanes that we stay in, and I think we do a really good job, and the key is timing, especially when it comes to 1031 exchanges, because that that's a a, a hot button these days. Everybody's trying to take the equity from their existing inventories and, 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 and houses and, and reinvesting into real estate, which is why they're uh, coming to you, John, because they want to invest that money in some good quality products. Yeah. yeah. That, that, don't mean to cut you off there, Graham, but uh, I, my experience working with other banks, you know, Bank of America, uh, Chase Bank, Wells Fargo, it just seems like the underwriting process is really tough. Whereas working with your group, it seems like you're really able to expedite the process of getting these loans closed quickly and efficiently. Well, the underwriting guideline that Fannie Ray wrote uh, back probably around eight to oh eight oh nine somewhere in that ballpark, they wrote it uh, wrote it so difficult for and lenders to interpret correctly, where it really was designed for builders that were doing scams, and which comes back to haunt the turnkey environment. And a lot of lenders are gun shy; and they won't even do it. We we can certainly deliver more the, directly to uh, other servicing companies. Let's just say we have twenty that we can pick and choose from. Only two will buy turnkey properties. It doesn't matter what the uh, uh, the, the borrower's credit or FICO scores or how much money they have in the bank. 
It's just the nature of the beast of the turnkey product. If they want, if we, the, our company understands how to do turnkey loans, and that's the key, and we do it in a very timely fashion. Okay, so what are you seeing right now with with interest rates? Uh, I, I do see that they're steadily increasing uh, over the past couple of years. And then what is your prediction with the rates for the rest of 2018? Yes, unfortunately, the roads have come up. Uh, they started getting uh, pretty aggressive right around the holiday period. Then we had a pretty good spike this first week in January, and they've been slowly creeping up a little bit. I think they've somewhat stabilized in the last week and a half. Uh, but I think we'll probably creep up maybe another quarter of a point. That's just my guesstimation. Of course, if I knew uh, what that would be, I'd be living on Wall Street. But I, I'm hoping that we won't go any further than uh, another quarter point up in, in rate. You know, what would you say to an investor that's saying, oh, rates are creeping not maybe I'm just going to sit on the sidelines. No, I've been working with investors for close to 20 years, and you talk to any of the seasoned guys out there that's been investing that long, and they'll all tell you any rate below 7% on an investor rate is still a good rate, and that's still true today. I think what we've been uh, experiencing is we've all been spoiled for the last eight years. With the last administration, the rates came down considerably, and we've been sitting on a, kind of a low environment for quite some time. So delivering these type of performance to these uh, clients of yours, John, you know, when you see a 5% raise versus a 4.5% rate where well, your cash flow is off that much, but it's still a very good buy. Mm-hmm. So that I don't think that's going to hinder the the buying power at all, in my opinion. And as far as the equity is concerned, people are recognizing that they do have equity in their homes, and they're they're getting them two ways. They're either doing a first lien cash out refinance, or they're getting a HELOC. And I I love I love HELOCs. I've got one personally. Uh, and I think that's really a great way to go, and you don't have to disrupt your first loan because chances are your first first loan rate is probably at a good rate at this point. Right. So, you know, what I see with a lot of my investors is it's it's kind of like a double-edged sword. You know, a lot of investors are looking at it, looking at the market and saying, wow, it's at its all-time high again. Should I buy? And then you have other investors that are saying, well, rates are still low. Now's the time to buy. What would you say to those type of investors? Well, in Dallas and Fort Worth, we, yeah, we're experiencing some better than usual appreciations. There's no question about it. But I've been investing personally for about 15 years. And even when the 08 bust, we saw depreciations probably on an average no more than like 2%. So yeah, we're experiencing some appreciation right now. But if, if you're they're scared about going into the quote bust, I mean, it's really not that big of a bust in the whole scheme of things. Okay, Graham, that's great. Now, now that you mentioned yourself as an investor, tell me a little bit more about Graham the investor. Why DFW and why Texas for your investments? Well, when I started working with investors, a lot of them were on the West Coast, but they own inventory here in the Dallas and Fort Worth area. And one guy in, in mine, he, he was an accountant by trade. He's been investing since probably early 80s. And he's looked all over the country being an accountant. Obviously, he's very analytical and has looked all over the country and all of his inventory is here. So the answer is why? And it's because the, the price points are good here and the rent rates are good here. And he finally convinced me of that. And I bought my first property sight unseen from him and actually made a profit on it. And then after that, I started acquiring a lot of properties back in 03, 04. And it's true. I mean, the, the retail's price points are good and the rents are strong. And that's why I've always loved investing here in Dallas and Fort Worth. Great. So, you know, with my company, American Real Estate Investments, uh, we offer a turnkey rental property. What attracts you to that turnkey route? Um, just just kind of elaborate on that. Well, John, I'm going to be biased here, and I'm going to say that uh, I work with turnkey providers all over the country, and I'll have to say hands down that your uh, rehab is probably the best in the nation. It really is. And I'm very fortunate to have to get out and see the products myself, and I'm very, very impressed how John takes a, a, a distressed property and turns it into, in my opinion, a very nice piece of property. Uh, but as far as the turnkey concept, I've got a full-time job. I don't have time to get on the open market to battle on the MLS with everybody else that's going to outprice me. And I, I just don't have that time. And I mean, you're coming to me with a quote turnkey program. You know, I want somebody to find a nice house, renovate it, put a tenant in, and, you know, I get the loan for it and I go home and you send me a check every month. That's all I care about. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's that's exactly what we're trying to do for our investors. And yeah. that's where I think that my company brings a lot of value. Um, so tell me, what type of single family investments have you purchased and invested in that brought you the most success? And by what type, I mean, you know, there's A class buildings, B class buildings, C class buildings. 
I like to relate the higher end B class and A class properties to really kind of in line with the median value in, in the market that you're looking to invest in. When I first got started off back in 03, 02, uh, I bought a condominium, okay, first and foremost. And then I uh, got the, the taste in my mouth and I said, okay, I got some momentum going. So I ended up buying a couple of, actually, I bought like four duplexes. I bought a couple of fourplexes. Oddly enough, I didn't buy any single families. I bought a townhome. And then over the course of uh, the last, say, 15 years, I finally recognized that I was buying in C property areas, which were not as good as the areas that I really wanted to be in and have my assets in. Because, you know, in my opinion, you, you buy in a C area, you're going to get a C tenant, okay? And I decided last year to go ahead and upgrade my inventory, which I sold eight not, and turned around and bought nine, and I did it all through a 1031 exchange. And I came to you, John, as you know, and you graduated me from a you know a C minus to like a B plus and A minus uh, properties, which I'm extremely th- pleased with. My rents are much higher. I don't have to deal with these tenants that are, that are coming and going and destroying your properties. So, you know, there's always a risk as being a, quote, investor investor, but you want to go with the right type of asset, in my opinion. Um, all right, Graham, thank you so much. We're going to interrupt. you got to go to a commercial break real quick. We actually have some questions from some folks here in Dallas that want to know specifically. I know you guys touched on this a little bit about the interest rates here in Dallas, if that's actually going to help them or hurt them. So we're going to talk to you coming back. In the meantime, make sure to head to realestatecowboysdfw.com. We'll be right back. Attention beach lovers, discover how affordable it can be to own a luxury beach home or your own private island in breathtaking Belize. The New York Times recently rated Placencia, Belize as one of the top places to visit. It is possible to own a luxury villa, condo, or a private island for a fraction of the cost you might think. Belize is becoming one of the top places for Americans to retire abroad. It is full of majestic beauty from the beaches to the mountains and the barrier reef. Find out how their islands came to be featured on HGTV's Island Hunters and how you can leverage your retirement funds to own a piece of paradise. If you've ever considered owning a luxury beach home or your own private island, contact American Real Estate Investments today to learn more or book a trip to see for yourself on one of their upcoming Discover Belize tours. Space on these tours is limited. Call today, 214-669-6106, or visit the website at areibelize.com. Welcome back. You are listening to Real Estate Cowboy Radio. I'm Amanda Guerra, along with your head real estate honcho, John Larson, with a 20-gallon hat, as we are calling him here. We are talking about uh, real estate in Texas, more specifically in Dallas-Fort Worth. And we've been joined uh, during our last segment by Grand Parham with Highlands Residential Mortgage. So as you guys have been talking, we've been getting some questions from our listeners. Uh, This is from Robert in Dallas. He actually has two questions. So this is the first one. He wants to know, does the increase in interest rates rates lead actually to better deals on real estate. What do you guys think about that? Graham, I'll let you take that one first. I think the demand is still strong, and I think it's going to continue to be strong. Uh, like I alluded to earlier, I mean, uh, anything below 7% is still a great rate. And if somebody is going to quibble over a quarter percent interest rate and have a negative impact to their cash flow of, say, 10 to $20, they probably shouldn't be investing to begin with, okay? So I think we're going to continue to be strong as far as the deals out there. I really don't see that people are going to start slicing deals simply because of interest rates. I think we're going to be strong even through six, six and a half, to be honest with you. And I know I purchased my properties in the past, and I was in the seven. And I was just happy as I could be. So, I mean, like I say, we've all been spoiled. I think that some of the newbies may come at you a little more aggressive than than most, saying, well, you know, the interest rate's up, your cash flows are not that good. You know what? They shouldn't be in the game, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with Graham. And, and I don't see any slowdown in, in demand at all. I mean, I actually, you know, with my turnkey rental company, I have more demand than I've ever had for single-family homes. Uh, inventory is very, very scarce in this market, and it's with all the people that are moving in. I mean, there's just huge, huge demands for inventory right now. And with me, I, I'm with Graham. I believe the money's still cheap. All right. And Robert's a second question. Is it more beneficial to invest in single family or multifamily? It's a question a lot of people have. Mm. Uh, I can give you my personal perspective on that. When I initially got going, I did invest in some fourplexes, and it took me a while to figure out, and I had my uh, good buddy that was the accountant that I was alluding to earlier point out that he had some fourplexes himself, and he started getting rid of them and asking him why. And he started saying, well, you know, the fourplexes are typically a two-bedroom, two-bath, and a common area to park. 
okay? Whereas a single family house, you know, it's a three, two, two or more with a fenced in yard, you know, garage door opener, the whole nine yards. So the families themselves have a tendency to stay a lot longer than the more transient people in the, like the fourplex, because they're almost like the apartment renters. And so, you know, even though the, when you get a, a, a the, the fourplex that's full, it's a, cl- a cash flow monster. But when you start putting the numbers to it for an annual uh, overall profit, when you have to take a look at the make readies, you know, sometimes it's not as profitable as you think. And plus, on the resale side, you know, you can get uh, you can sell that single family a lot quicker than you can the fourplex. Yeah, the, I love this question. Um, I'm a single family guy, so I like I like multifamily stuff, you know. But like Graham said, when you get in the four units, I mean, your your renter pool is a little bit smaller. You're not really getting families at that point. Those people, the turnover tends to be a lot more, right? When you just have a single person, maybe it's a student or whatever it may be, they're renting for you for the year because they're going to a nearby college or whatever it may uh, may be in that in that. Uh, instant. But I like single family homes because they appreciate in value. You know, multifamily properties, if you need to exit out of these these investments, you really can only sell to another investor because they're being sold based on cash flow and cap rates. Whereas single family homes, especially B and A class single family homes in good good areas and good neighborhoods, those are attractive to retail buyers, right? You can sell that to an actual homeowner and that person doesn't care how much the property is going to rent for and what the cap rate is. They're going to pay you market value or in a market like this, more than market value to win that property. So in my experience where I've really made been well made wealth in, in real estate is by investing in single family homes, taking advantage of, of Fannie Mae finance and leverage and and letting these properties sitting on them while they appreciate and then in turn selling to a regular homeowner and cashing in on that equity. And one last thing I'd say is just if you can find a, a two to four unit uh, building, many times if it's going to be at the right price to really see those cash flow numbers that you're looking for they're not going to be in the best areas a lot of times. That's true. That's very true. Graham, thank you so much. So really quick before you leave today, how can our listeners get in touch with you? Very simple. My direct dial at the office is 972-581-2998. And I'm even available after hours. Uh, If I leave the office, that goes directly to myself. So call me anytime. All right, Graham, thanks so much for coming. Um, You know, first guest on the Real Estate Cowboys radio show. Really good to have you. And I'd just like to tell the listeners, again, you know, Graham and his team at Highlands Mortgage, uh, if you're looking for, you know, taking advantage of that Fannie Mae financing, uh, the 30-year fixed rate that they're offering right now, um, and and looking to invest in some investment properties, they're definitely the team to do it. Like I said, you know, and Graham said, he is an investor himself, so they're a very investor-friendly lender, and they get these loans done, which is uh, something that I really like. Absolutely. And I hope for the folks listening, you guys have really come away with some insightful tools to get started or even just become interested in passive real estate investing. You're going to learn so much from the show as it goes on. And at this time every week, we're going to turn it over to Johnny Collins, who's not just a real estate guru, but someone we here really admire and learn from. And Johnny, you have a takeaway for our listeners. This story I want to, I want to share with you. Um, I won't say it's really motivating as much as it's inspiring, I hope. You know, as a as a youngster, I already told you that my, my mother uh, basically raised me in the real estate industry, and I watched her, you know, amass uh, a small, you know, fortune in terms of just a lot of houses. And uh, unfortunately, my father died very young. He died when he was 47 years old. And that really took our family or placed our family in a tough situation because he was the giant and he was really the leader of our of our family. Um, but I want to say this, when it all hit the fan, we weren't worried about money. And I, and I say that as humbly as I can say it because, you know, I'm a believer and I don't want to go into all that, but I'm a believer and I know that God provides. But we were not worried about money because my mother has strategically placed things. She literally went out and took all the money out of the market. And on top of all the houses she already had, she put it all back into real estate. Right. So when she got to a place where she needed something, she just go sell a house mm-hmm. and that supplied all of the need. Right. When she got to a place when somebody else needed something, she just went and sold a house and that supplied all of the need. And what I'm saying is real estate, passive real estate investing is an opportunity. But more importantly, it's a platform to where you can not just take care of your household. But when the time comes, you'll be able to take care of somebody else's household, specifically if you partner with the right people and get the right things in place. And I think um, what, what, what you and I are doing, John, is we want to give people enough information where they can make decisions from an informed place. Because everybody talks about the good stuff. Yep. I'm, I am an example of the bad stuff. 
right? Mm-hmm. I am an example of someone who lost, you know, the, the biggest giant in my life, very own. Mm-hmm. But it was because of real estate. It was because of the decisions and moves that my parents had made in real estate to where we never worried about money. Yeah. Like how many times we're talking about a return on life. Yep. Like how many times can you really wake up in the morning and say as an adult, as a parent, as a grandparent, right, as a great uncle, as an uncle, as a great aunt, an, an aunt, and say, you know what, nobody will have any problems because if I need to, I'll just go sell one of my 15, one of my 20, one of my 120 homes mm-hmm. and just write a check for it. Yep. What we're talking about, where we're positioning people, is to make sure they don't have any checkbook problems. Yeah, that's that's a beautiful message. That's exactly what we're trying to do here. On the Real Estate Cowboys radio show, we're trying to give people, you know, trying to educate people and just make sure that, you know, they're working with the right team, uh, they're, they're investing in the right market, and, and they're doing the right thing to actually build passive income so in case some hardships come down the line. Because they're coming. Yeah, they're prepared for it. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this, John, and, and I want to I wanna make sure that the people know kind of how we think, because John's slipping right now. What we don't do is we don't use words like try in our business. <laughs> I can't try to help y'all get to a place because if I try, that meant I have an opportunity to fail. Yep. We're going to set the expectations uh, with this show and give you all the knowledge and all the data, the things needed so you can make an informed decision so things and decisions you make are foundational. That way you're not in the trying business, right? We're in the either you do or you don't business. Yep. And I'm excited to be here. I, you know, Thank you for, for getting me involved in this when you called. Um, I got excited. I've been excited. I'm still excited. So I'm I'm just really happy uh, for the people that they're going to get a chance to experience you like I've experienced you. And I've been able to watch you all's growth and seeing some of the phenomenal things that you all have done, both good and bad. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think I think they're going to be better for it. Yeah. Great. So I just to piggyback off that, for those of you that are listening, you know, go to the real estate cowboys, DFW dot com website and take our passive investor test. Find out what type of investor you are. Uh, I, I mentioned a few different uh, passive investment options today, rental properties, private money lend- lending, syndications, uh, vacation rentals. Uh, we have a quick quiz just on our website that you take that quiz, and it'll tell you what type of investment option is best for you. So go to the Real Estate Cowboys DFW.com and take our passive investor test. All right, John and Johnny, thank you so much. I'm Amanda Guerra. This is the Real Estate Cowboys radio show. As you heard John say, uh, when we're not with you here on air, we are with you online. Make sure to check it out, realestatecowboysdfw.com. You guys have a great Sunday. Get your cowboy hat on and talk passive income investing in the real estate market in North Texas every Sunday morning at 8 here on KRLD with your experts, John Larson and Johnny Collins, and your host, Amanda Guerra. The preceding was a paid commercial program paid for by American Real Estate Investments, LLC, and does not reflect the opinions or advice of KRLD or Intercom Media Corporation.